<laughs> just gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Hello, are you? Hello, why can I see myself? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can change it so that you can see just me. No, no, it's fine. I was just seeing only myself. So I can... oh, all right, okay. <laughs> it looks like it's sunny there. Uh, no, it's not. I just put on the lamp because it's raining. <laughs> Which, like, finally, finally. <laughs> I know, it's finally starting to get a wee bit rainy here. It rained yesterday for a wee bit, and then it looks like it's going to rain heavy later, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> it's so excited. Yeah, it's like free ASMR for me, honestly. I couldn't sleep last night, and it started thundering. I fell asleep instantly. <laughs> Aye, it's so good. I mean, the last time we were on holiday, and we had went up to um, a wee place just outside Oban and it was like our last night and we were staying in this place and it was like right on the loch and it had all glass windows and there was like a proper storm so you could see like all the rain bouncing into the water and it was like thundering and we got up at like the thunder woke us up maybe about three o'clock in the morning and we just sat and watched it for ages it was so good. <laughs> yeah I get up for it too so I get it. <laughs> So uprooted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what are we gonna do about it without being too mean? I know. <laughs> well, there were things that I liked. Um so I, I liked um the sort of folklore that ran through it. I know that you are obviously like big into Russian folklore, so you didn't really enjoy that aspect of it as much. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it's like, how do I say it? A contributing factor to a book for me. I can't like it just for that. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Um, and then I liked the descriptions of the forest and I liked like finding out about the forest. I feel like if it focused more on that than it did on the awful forced romance, <laughs> like it, it could have been a lot better because I really did find that interesting and I love anything that is like forest related so a magical forest was like amazing but yeah agreed if she just focused on that remember our theory I think it was better than anything she did <laughs> I oh and then oh, just the romance was awful for me I mean always when it starts with abuse and it's like attempted rape it's not going to be a hit for me <laughs> totally agree I, I feel like they're so like there's almost I get that there's tropes right which is fine and I read so much fantasy and so much YA fantasy like I can deal with a trope but I also feel like there's trends in YA and like recently the trend is just enemies to lovers but like it's really done well <laughs> and I feel like that's what this was trying to be but like it it just wasn't believable because yeah as soon as she saw him she was like oh you're beautiful like uh, I totally fancy you and it's like you wouldn't think that like yeah I mean especially with enemies to lovers it's hard to do in a standalone it's hard to do in general but <laughs> in a standalone almost impossible I feel like there's so much enemies to lovers which I love that I've started actually liking the good guys <laughs> <laughs> which is definitely new for me I always like the villains <laughs> Well, that's good. I just feel like if it's no giving me like pride and prejudice level of enemies to lovers, then I'm like just a bit less interested. So that's it. Yes. Also, that was just like awkwardness, to be honest, and not like actual abuse. <laughs> Aye, exactly. Um, I I really didn't like that, and I felt as well like I don't know. I just felt like the relationship between her and her friend like her best friend was a bit weird as well because then like her friend almost had like this resentment that she got picked and she didn't and I just feel like it wouldn't be like that in real life like yeah and it was a little weird how they didn't go through any development like her friend was barely a character she's just there all the time yeah and like a friend actually turned into wood and it still wasn't an interesting plot point. <laughs> like, and yeah. I, like no character development. Like I think that, that would be quite traumatic 
for me as a person, <laughs> I just woke up a tree, like, but she had no reaction. And she was just like, Hi. no, they just, they just went with it. And she became a plot device. Like for the entirety of the second half, I was wondering why she's even going with them. <laughs> like she doesn't need to, she doesn't have magic. She doesn't really know how to use her power yet, but then she does when it, when she has to. It was just a weird friendship, I felt. So then I didn't I didn't really care about them as friends. And I felt like when she was going above and beyond to try and save her friend and like trying to sneak out to save her friend, like I just didn't buy into it as much because I was like, but like these aren't really best friends. These are a wee bit frenemies, like not to mention the fact that her parents are alive like I think her entire family is alive and I just remembered that fact <laughs> I just didn't feel like the character development was great at all for oh, the characters in fairness I just felt like it was very flat like they started and ended almost being exactly the same people yeah but that's like I almost actually like hating a book to be neutral about it <laughs> because at least I have feelings about it I have nothing in regards to a fruit and <laughs> so that's true that's true I suppose it just I it was very bland it was a quick read like I felt like it was quite fast paced but everything kicking off which is good because I find sometimes in a fantasy it can be quite slow build but again because it's a standalone like I think she kicked off right for the get-go which is great um but I just didn't care about anything that was happening so the pacing just wasn't enough to, to make it good. No, it's just weird to me how, especially because it's a standalone, she could have killed people off. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need them, like, for later books, so it would have actually helped it feel more dangerous. But she was like, no, no, everyone lives. Everyone lives. Everything is fine. The woods wasn't even anything interesting. Just leave that. <laughs> I know. I know. And she, she made some really interesting points. Like when we sort of find out about the woods and that obviously the woods were like this race of people who were basically trying to like defend themselves and protect their home and then it sort of just went too far like that's such an interesting concept and I can totally root for like a race who's trying to you know just get by and trying to survive and they've went too far because I love a villain so like I would have been down for the bad guys but again like she just didn't explore it enough we got like one chapter of this yeah. entire backstory and then that was it it was like never never mentioned again and there wasn't even enough afterwards like to be like all right well this is how life moved on then like knew that they weren't trying to survive and kill everybody so it was like well what was the point <laughs> like no I feel like she had more fun with the romance but then like just write a romance we don't need a fantasy I don't exactly. get why people do that but in the end, it was funny to me. I was like, there could be one redeeming quality if the wizard actually leaves and doesn't come back. But he came back. <laughs> I know, she, just, she didn't kill off anybody meaningful. And again, like that would have at least been interesting because we would have been able to see like the character's reaction to it and how that would affect them. Like, and I think it is bad when you're reading a book and you're like rooting for somebody to die just so that you can get like a wee bit character development I think that that's so bad I mean but true especially as a standalone and I love how when they went into the woods no one died but the main characters it was like literally everyone but the characters whose name we know <laughs> like everyone Malik lived the other wizard lived but oh the soldiers yeah I'm supposed to cry I never heard of them before <laughs> I know there was just no emotional attachment for me at all to anybody like and I wasn't I just wasn't emotionally invested in them or really what was happening like and I wasn't yeah, was emotionally invested in the forest <laughs> yeah that again, was the closest <laughs> I but then again like even in the end when we found out everything that was happening like I just I checked out by that point so I just couldn't even have that had that like emotional pull to it because I was just like no <laughs> like I'm done yeah but she's weird about it because she gives you several like points in the book where you think it could go a certain way and you're like this could be interesting then she doesn't <laughs> like for example when the wizard was caught I was like this is interesting the dragon's gonna be oh, for the forest now they're gonna have to fight him that will be cool okay no someone's gonna die oh, okay kind of no the woods is actually going to be an opponent. No. 
I know there could have been so many different directions that she had taken that would have been so much more interesting than just a, this is my best pal who's a tree and this is the guy who's abusing me who I fancy. Like, and I just feel like that's all we got. Yeah, not to mention, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but in fantasy, I feel like not a lot of time goes by in general but here it felt even more intense because it's a standalone like she became a master in a couple months I could accept this if it's like I don't know five books but in one I know and like I I know you are not particularly fond of fantasy standalones I do really like them I've read some great ones and it's totally believable like in the Ravenous Stark by A.M. Strickland I read that at the beginning of the year and that's a standalone and like this girl, she finds that she's a blood mage, like and has never used her powers before, so needs to learn how to use them. So quite a similar premise, but her journey is totally believable. She doesn't go for like no being able to use her powers to like being amazing within a day. Like it takes work and effort, and like you see that progression. And I just felt like there was none of that here. She almost learned how to progress her powers by chance, <laughs> like. Yeah, what definitely annoys me is when you have a master character, like he's already an asshole, we established this, but at least he was good at magic. But when she removed that by making her better than him and teaching him, he was like kind of pointless, essentially. I know, I know. And like he is supposed to have been like this great evil that everybody like loved and feed off for years and years and years. But then like a sassy teenager comes along and all of a sudden like... <laughs> He's just a wee tiny wizard again, and it's like, no. I don't even remember if we got a proper display of like how powerful he is because I don't remember. But I also remember the comment on Goodreads that was like, he is this really feared wizard. He lets women go to university with money. <laughs> how dare he? I know. I, know. I, I just, I don't know. And I felt as well like his character development was really weird because. We learn a lot about him, sort of in the first couple of chapters without even meeting him. And so, like, she obviously is concerned that her friend could be going away and being, like, sexually abused or, you know, like, held captive without her, with, like, against her will and stuff like that. And she's concerned about how she's going to be treated. And then she gets there and, like, he isn't as bad. Like, <laughs> I get he's abusive, like, and he's a wee bit like, get back in the kitchen and make me my dinner, you know? But, like, he isn't trying to sexually assault her, you know? Like, there's been the insinuation that he's going to try and rape her or take it against her will at any point, which is good. But then somebody else comes in, he tries to rape her, and, like, even his reaction to that, I just felt was so weird because he's so against it. <laughs> And later on in the book, like when she confronts him about sleeping with other girls or whatever, and he's like, I would never do that. Like, I've never touched any of them, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not why I'm here for. Like, then why were you so all right with the fact that she was nearly raped? Like, so like, pack a side. <laughs> yeah, not to mention the whole scene where he's like angry at her and he pins her with his like leg between her legs. Okay, okay, but... <laughs> Not to mention that his backstory, we don't, don't learn anything aside from the fact that, like, he was with a woman, something happened there, she heard him or whatever. That's all we learn about him. So basically, this man, <laughs> this man's whole story just revolves around romance, and I thought he would actually be interesting. I know, I know. Like, and again, like, if he's the most powerful wizard, like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, talk to me. How did he become this powerful wizard? Like, how is he so revered? How is he so skilled and talented? Like, what happened in his story? Like, tell me that. Like, I didn't care about his love life. Like, are his ex-girlfriends? Like, that's not why I'm here. Yeah, we care about why he left court, not about how he became, you know, Gandalf. Hi. <laughs> and again, that whole bit in the middle where she was at court, I just felt like... Oh. We didn't get anything out of that, like, at all. No, <laughs> it was completely unnecessary. It was to find out that the queen is, like, from the woods, but, like, shocker, mm -hmm. really shocking. She was in there for 20 years. <laughs> I feel like there was a different way to find this out. And aside from that, she just, I, if I remember, she just bitched about the fact that she's in court. <laughs> she does. So, like, that was pointless. And get the dragon, who was apparently not even a character at the point. <laughs> I know it just felt so bizarre like 
I was doing the audio for it, so I didn't need it physically. And at one point I was like, have I clipped on the wrong book? <laughs> like, like what? Because it just totally then didn't focus on the forest, really. Didn't focus on, like, dragon, like we had said, or, like, any of the characters we had gotten to know. It was just, like, an entirely new setup, an entirely new place. Like, sort of, if you're learning things to the ground up again, and it was like, what is the oh, point of this? The nickname thing. I was, it, I feel like everything was underwhelming that she set up. I was like, okay, at least this. What name is she going to get? They were like, you don't need a name. You're a special snowflake. You don't need a name. I know. Oh, and it's just so frustrating. <laughs> also, why is he called Dragon? I That gave me way higher expectations. <laughs> he is well, because I like, I will buy a book if there is a dragon in it or there's a dragon on the cover. Like, I'm so... Same. So, like, the fact he was called Dragon and then, like, didn't even transform. Because I totally expected him to be, like, a shapeshifter of some sort. Yeah, but I mean, everyone else has normal names, if I remember, like birds or whatever, everything, like normal names. Dragon is a normal name. There's not like a wizard called Unicorn. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> you would expect that he would have one special power, but no. Even like, if he couldn't transform into a full dragon, but like his power was like, maybe elemental magic and could control fire or something, like cool like that would be interesting and it would make sense to have called him dragon but again there was just no reasoning no explanation and no backstory at all <laughs> like yeah but that's i mean i don't know anything about her other books apparently this isn't one of the better ones maybe we will see <laughs> but i don't know but i really just like it when authors want to write a certain genre and then just decide it as a more popular one like if she wanted to write a romance, just write a romance. I get it's less popular, but but she could have even done like a similar story to what we got, but maybe do it like historical fiction, and instead of being a wizard and it being in like a magical town where the forest is killing them, like it could have just been a wee town and he's the king and like he he picks a girl. You know what I mean? Like she could have done it like that. Like, and then had it maybe for that angle, I just felt like there was nothing about this that made it stand out as a fantasy for me. Like, it could have been any other genre. Yeah, I mean, you said you didn't read, like, Akatar, right? You were just from the left. No, I haven't, I haven't. Yeah, that, I feel like, is an excellent example on why she is so popular, because she knows what she wants to write, and absolutely power to her, because those books don't pretend they're fantasy. No one reads it for the plot. <laughs> no one reads it for the plot they just read it for the hot guys which great for you but I feel like she should have done that not like then oh here is fascinating Russian literature but not really not really I really wanted that smut scene <laughs> <laughs> I just I really didn't I didn't have a good time with it at all I think the the most fun that I had while reading the book was just us ranting about it to each other and I'm so glad you didn't like it either because then I would have been like am I missing something like what is going on here yeah it would have just been a little sad if one of us was raving about it yes. but <laughs> yeah I think I would have probably dropped it because I don't know why this year I do not have the patience I just don't like I read some I read books that I actually like and when I didn't really enjoy them at the time, I dropped them. So this year, this would not have been good to read alone. <laughs> no, I'm the same. I, I think if I wasn't doing it as a buddy reader, I would have DNF'd it. Um, it just, the bits that I enjoyed weren't enough for me to want to continue reading it. And like, I am such a character driven reader. So if I don't connect to your characters and I don't care about them or their development, like, I'm not going to enjoy your book. <laughs> so. I mean, I also have Spinning Silver, but I'm glad I didn't buy Deadly Education because I'm not sure how much of her I want to read. <laughs> like, I will read Spinning Silver because I think it's like a Rumble Pilkin thing, which I prefer. But if it's another romance, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I feel like it will be someday will fall in love with Rumble Stilt Skin and break his curse, and you know it's going to go that way. <laughs> yeah, I see it, but. I don't know, it's just funny to me because considering how much I loved Catherine Arden, she's my favorite now, and she raised about Naomi Novik, I was at least expecting her to be close to her league. She wasn't. <laughs> they both have the same source, like the same vibe, like the wintry stuff and the 
not necessarily the forest, but like just a Russian thing, which I, I do love because it's familiar to me. But her focus wasn't actually on the Russian stuff. So it's kind of a moot point. <laughs> I've never really read a lot of Russian literature, so I'm not as familiar with the folklore. So I think that's why I probably enjoyed it in this, because it was just like a wee introduction to it, whereas if that's something that you really enjoy in a book, then you're probably going to get less out of it. Mm. I mean, I always do enjoy it, but it's, I don't know, it's like if you read a book about the UK, like it's cool, but you know it. <laughs> aye, I know, that's fair enough. <laughs> Although I read, I do read a lot of Scottish books. So. Well, that's great. If you have something cool that's from Colin, let, let me know. Hello, and I just wanted to wrap up this video in a way that wasn't a little weird, like just a cutoff. The reason that I stopped it there is because we just go into other topics for like another 45 minutes that have nothing to do with Uprooted. So like the cut is a little bit awkward because we didn't really... <laughs> formally announced that we were done with the part where we were ranting so i just wanted to jump in and make it a little bit more seamless i wore my my scottish thing that i bought in scotland in honor of my <laughs> scottish friend amy who i read the book with we really had fun and i think i would really love to do another buddy read with her because we even though we don't always like the same things i feel like we mostly agree on when things are done a certain way and we can talk about it in a way that is really fun so this was a cool project and my first official buddy read so I think it went well let me know if you enjoyed or if we roasted it too hard tell us your opinion on Uprooted and if you agree with us or if it was even a little bit entertaining in any case go over to Amy's channel. It's Booktube with Amy. I will leave it in the description. Subscribe to her because she's great. And <laughs> if she uploads this, then you don't have to watch it twice. But if you came from her channel, then hello. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in my next video.